On April the 3rd, dead birds fell from the sky in Norman, Oklahoma, even though state wildlife officials say there's no cause for concern. Residents are alarmed, and with good reason. I've talked to a number of people who are just just in the, the throes of despair, of, of some, just some dark, we're, we're in some dark areas. There's anger, there's this frustration, there's all sorts of uh, uh, spiritual unrest I'm sensing about the situation that the United States would be balkanized and that civil war would be coming to our, our country. Now, a lot of people poo-pooed, they mocked and ridiculed. Now, when I make that claim, I'm just saying that to set the stage that people will always embrace the fantasy world of denial versus embrace the real world of what is happening. If the preachers who are teachers, who should have been standing for righteousness, should have been proclaiming the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ, should have been talking about what happens historically to nations that basically surrender to Satan and deny the living God, if the pulpits had been pure, we would not be in the state of uh, condition we're in. And as I said, joy has withered away from the people of God. There's a sense of foreboding. There's a sense of dread. There's so much fear. There's so much angst. There's so much confusion. There's so much trepidation. We are in uncertain times, but yet there are certain C-E-R-T-A-M times if we know the scripture. So where are we at in America? We are a divided nation. The Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. And with 34, 43, however many states are planning on filing petitions of succession, and by the way, 25,000 people out of a state of 20 million or, or, you know, 10 million, whatever, is not a lot of people. So the point being is that we're seeing now the division. It started, Doug, as you know, I've said this on your show and other shows, whenever anybody puts something in front of American, whether it was Afro-American, whether it was uh, Latino-American, whether it was Hispanic-American, whether it was anything in front of the word American, that's when the division became sectarian. Jesus in Matthew 24 said nation would rise against nation. Well, very few people even understood that. They always put it in the context of a Cold War. They put it in the context of nation states. But that word means ethnos in Greece. It means that there's going to be ethnic rioting. So by understanding the words, and contrary to some guys who are on the radio saying it doesn't make a difference to understand the Greek or Hebrew, oh, yes, it does. Context means everything. So the point is, is that now we have such ethnic turmoil. We've got the situation where gangs in America, whatever uh, form of a gang uh, groupings there are, have been armed surreptitiously you know, for the past pretty much 20 years. I remember when Bo Greitz and, uh, and others were talking about all the arms coming to the United States by Chinese freighters. I remember carrying the story live at the time it was happening. Uh, certain Chinese ships being uh, oh uh, seized by customs, but that was just the throwaway weapons. The real ones came into Vancouver, British Columbia, etc. So now we're in a time period where people are really desperate for meaning. And again, I think that we need to articulate clear enough the context of the end. First of all, when the current uh, occupant of the White House made the statement, America is the greatest nation in the world, we intend to change all that. I don't think people understand it. I don't people understood it. Obviously, with all the voting discrepancies in Ohio, you can't tell me there aren't LDS members in uh, Pennsylvania or Ohio, and you can't tell me they didn't vote for Mitt Romney yet. Not one Republican sniveling coward, loudmouth, uh, and I'm not aiming this at Romney, I'm aiming it at the Republican Party, would even challenge the results of the voting booths. Balkanization of the United States is already a done deal. You have to turn unto the Lord. You have to turn to the Lord Jesus. Listen, that's the only answer I have to everyone out there, is if you will call upon him in the day of trouble, and this is pretty good to fit that description, he will hear, he will answer us. We're watching now, if you will, the total dissolution of everything that made America great. The military, you talked about it, I think, Joe, it's being taken apart. It's being taken apart. 
before America is destroyed, God is going to show the people of America the sins of its leaders, and then God is going to reveal to the people their sins before a holy God. The genetic manipulation of not only the human genome and animal genome and insect genome, that's all been combined in antiquity. And that the monsters you see weren't just representations of a man who had a head of an eagle or that the satyrs and all of the different mythological creatures were just some kind of a artist license. Those things really existed. Well, you know, ah, ha, 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 quail's out of his mind, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and now... Everything that they mock is present in the headlines. And I can say this, and, and Doug, I, I, I mean this with all my heart. I have said to the Lord, and I've said, Lord, I tried to bring your people into a level of understanding so they could deal with it. Where did I go wrong? And he said to me simply, he said, Steve, you must understand, except I take the scales off their eyes and take the scales off their hearts. I once preached a sermon. Every man or every woman has two sets of scales. The ones on their eyes that blind them to seeing until God lifts the scales. But the other set of scales is in the heart where people weigh out everything, you know? They're weighing out, should I or shouldn't I? Must I or mustn't I? Can I or can I? And when you understand the promise of the Word of God, the living power of the Holy Ghost moving through a human being, God tips those scales in your favor. So genetic Armageddon, most people, that went so far over their head, but a few took root of it. I can tell you this, when I first started talking about human cloning, everybody was still in the mindset of, of, of Dolly the sheep, okay? Well, I got news for you. Imagine, and Doug, this, this got somebody, someone very powerful in the world so furious that when I was on Coast to Coast talking about human clones and leaders of the world being replaced by their clones, I was told by an active duty four-star general in special operations that a certain individual got so furious that that was let known. Well, God does not keep the hidden secrets of darkness in the dark, so to speak, or covered when it's up to his children to basically seek out things to see if they be true. The Bible has made it clear that the prayers of a righteous, now none of us are righteous outside of Jesus, but God in his redemption imputes his righteousness. The prayers of a righteous man, a woman, avail much. But you know, people get mad at me because I use the word ask. How could any Christian use that word? That the little imps from hell have to snap. Well, it's simple. I'm trying to give control of my mouth over to the Lord. If you know, And by the way, the Bible even talks about the dumbass speaking, okay? Every day, and if it were in this contemporary, I would say the dumbass emailing, okay? But the point being is that people now, they can get offended over everything, but they won't get offended. Christians won't get offended over the slaughter of the infants. They won't get offended over the very behavior and lifestyles that cause Sodom and Gomorrah, Tyre and Sidon to perish. They won't get offended over absolutely the biggest presentation of corruption openly displayed in any political body. And, and, and the America has the moral high road. That's Bravo Sierra. That's uh, Bullis Manuras in Latin. Uh, people, pe people's spiritual senses, are, uh, people are sensing that, that uh, we've crossed some sort of threshold and there's there's no turning back. Um, you know, we are living in prophetic times. I, I mean, uh, Steve, uh, you agree with that, obviously. I mean, there's no turning back from. Uh, is there is there a turn, any, any turning back as a nation? I would say this: that people will quote quote Second Chronicles seven fourteen. No, at this verse, and I'll say this: I have probably declared louder than anybody and longer than anybody. You know, if you look at the front of Drudge, this will illustrate my point. Four-star circus. You have two of America's most powerful individuals, military and the head of the CIA. And when you're a four-star, there's a, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And you've got them being portrayed with a honeypot. A honeypot is a seductress. It's a woman who is usually ch uh, trained 
by espionage, or forgive me, and like uh, by an espionage. KGB was famous for this, but actually Marcus Wolf, the head of the Stasi, who the Department of Homeland Security, actually FEMA before DHS existed, hired to teach them how to set up internal controls. I mean, the, the honeypot, he perfected that. These German spies who are, who are taught to basically seduce a man, okay? So when you got a hanky-panky right. under the desk, I don't need to go into the details, you know, listen, when when a man is, um, how do I say this, in, the, in their cases, I don't know that they both would be adulterers and, and uh, you know, fornicators, but when the women can control them by uh, their private parts, the bottom line is that's national security compromise, but you've got to see that this thing is playing out. It's playing out. God said, before I before I destroy America, God's going to destroy it. And somebody says, well, how can you say that? God bless America. When's the last time you saw the flag being flown right side up or the national anthem outside of a football, baseball, or basketball game? And I don't even know if they do it at basketball games. But the bottom line is, is that we're seeing now all of America's border, language, culture, as Michael Savage says, it's being deprecated. It's being destroyed. Our uniqueness has been uh, subjugated and sublimated. All of that which we stood apart from all the nations, where the American dollar used to be as good as gold, now it's not even as good as uh, uh, toilet paper. I still have people sending me emails, Doug, every day. And look, you know, I, I'm, I'm even taking down the prep tips off my website. You know, I'm saying to people, we're on vapor lock. Do what you want to do. Believe me if you want to believe me. Don't believe me. It doesn't matter. But if you don't think that now is the time, these, if you will, gas of reality, this time of being able to take one deep breath because a time comes when everybody holds their breath and waits for the hammer to fall. My statement is get out of the hammer's uh, area. I don't mean leaving the country. I mean leaving your normal mindset. I'm saying seek God. Uh, people are send me, I, I don't know, in the last couple of days, three, 400 emails. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Brethren, people sending me those emails, I ask that of the Lord Jesus every day. I say, Lord, show me what I am to do. Lord, make a way. Show me how to warn. Show me how to prepare. Show me where to go. And I don't mean out of the country. I mean, the bottom line is, here's, here's an email somebody sent me, okay? This is a good example. Steve, people tell me when the government comes for my weapons, I'll turn in some and hide some. What say you? They're not going to come and take your guns away. They're going to take you away. I've said that for 20 years. And, and by the way, Brian, I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just saying that's what they're coming to do. They know if they take a few guns away, chances are somebody has them hidden away someplace else. They round you up. Gun owners are terrorists. Terrorists go to prison camps. Terrorists get killed. End of story. That's my answer to that question. The only hope we have is individual people being uh, led on the right path, and uh, that is the only hope that people have for. And it is a great hope if you have the Lord. Um, we should not be in despair, even though you know we will feel like we're losing you know everything because. Our country is disappearing, but we are in a different time now. We are in a time that God appointed uh, for these things to happen. And we can't sit around and say, you know, oh, man, or believe in uh, a false hope like a politician or a country or a government to save us. We have to fully rely on Jesus, and maybe he's giving us this message now. You can't rely on anybody else, so rely on me. You know, it's... Excuse me, it's interesting that people are watching the total destruction of the global economy. So they'll pass this rule, it's believe it or not called martial law. Pretty impressive, a display of international military might. Thousands of men and women from several different countries all landed on Camp Pendleton. The FEMA camp bill allows the government to run at least six military installations when a national emergency is declared. These emergency centers would be run by FEMA under the command of the Secretary of Homeland Security.